In this video, we take you through an interesting and complex process. We'll take a look at the exciting process of ship splicing. We'll show you how separate parts of a ship can be put back together, from cutting to joining. Step by step, how a ship that has been cut can be put back together and ready to operate again. So, make sure you watch to the end to see how the technique and craftsmanship combine the parts of a ship into a solid sea-ready unit. The process of extending a ship, known as ship lengthening or jumboising, is a complex procedure that requires planning and engineering expertise. It must consider many aspects ranging from structural feasibility to design aspects. In modern times, this is usually done in a specialized facility known as a shipyard or a place designed to repair and build ships. The first step is planning and design. Engineers create detailed designs for additional parts of the ship and combine them with the existing structure. Once the design is complete, the ship must be emptied and the fuel drained to avoid the risk of fire. The next thing to do is for the ship to be put into dock. Additional sections of the ship's center segment are made at the shipyard, and these segments are usually built separately before being assembled. Next, the ship enters the support berth. When the ship enters the support, the ship, which is already resting on the support structure, can be moved using special tools. This structure is very useful because it is able to support the ship while allowing movement. The ship can be lifted in various directions, shifted forward and backward, and can even shift left and right. This support structure is capable of shifting the weight of ships weighing thousands of tons. The technology is extremely robust, allowing easy movement of the ship despite its enormous size. Before cutting the ship, there are a lot of components that need to be considered such as water pipes, gas pipes, cables, and various other components must be carefully checked. Imagine how complicated this job is with tens of thousands of cables that must be carefully cut and reconnected. The slightest mistake can be fatal. After going through the inspection process, the next step is the cutting process. Shipbuilders often use an oxyacetylene torch or laser to cut the hull. When cutting, they must ensure that the cutting tool follows the marked lines. These oxyacetylene torches typically use oxygen and acetylene gas to produce a very hot flame, which is capable of cutting through steel. In order to achieve a high level of accuracy, workers of advanced age are now using cutting robots. With great care, these robots ensure each cut conforms to a predetermined line Cutting a large ship takes a considerable amount of time, often weeks to months depending on the size and complexity of the ship. Once all parts of the ship have been successfully cut, one of the ship's parts is shifted to be separated. This process utilizes the drive system installed underneath the ship. Next, the completed center segment of the ship is added and is now ready for immediate installation. Making ship components can be much more complicated than cutting the hull. For one, designing and installing pipe systems for various functions such as fuel, water, connecting cables, control panels, and navigation systems. Workers also connect water and sewage pipes and make sure the connections are done properly. Once all the connections are complete, the next stage is welding and reinforcing the joints. Additional parts are joined to the ship using proper welding techniques. It is important to pay attention to this welding process so that the ship is really connected firmly. Welding must be done by skilled experts so that the connection is strong and durable. This process is carried out in stages and is accompanied by checks and tests such as ultrasonic and magnetic particle test to ensure welding quality. Once the welding is complete, the extended section is usually reinforced by adding additional beams or other structural reinforcing elements. Failure to do so could result in the ship splitting and sinking at sea while sailing. The next step of the ship enters the testing phase. After all ship components are installed, testing is carried out in the form of navigation tests in the harbor and navigation safety tests. 
the ship simulates navigation scenarios to check the response of equipment under various conditions to ensure all systems are functioning and connected properly. This step is to ensure all navigation systems on the ship function properly and the ship can operate safely at sea. In addition, the ship is also tested for stabilization by measuring the displacement or weight of water displaced by the ship under full load and empty load conditions. After all the tests are completed, the vessel is then certified by the Classification Board and Maritime Authority. To ensure everything is in order, the Maritime Authority will issue a Certificate of Seaworthiness. The estimated cost of a ship renewal can vary widely. To give you an idea, it can cost tens of millions of dollars depending on the scale of the project. For example, small vessels usually range from $1 million to $5 million, or about 15 billion to 70 billion rupiah. Meanwhile, large ships are usually more than $10 million, or at least around 150 billion rupiah. There are even ships that reach repair costs of 700 billion rupiah. Thank you for watching our video on the vessel cutting process. We hope you enjoy the explanation and can understand each step of the technique. This process is crucial to ensure that vessels can be processed efficiently and safely. If you have any questions or would like to discuss this topic further, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to get the latest content, and enable notifications so you don't miss any updates from us. See you in the next video and thank you for your support.